O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to, you, to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your Spirit come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free, to sing your praise for ever and ever. Amen. Psalm 118. I will give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. I will give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord proclaim, his mercy endures forever. In my constraint I called to the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is at my side, I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? With the Lord at my side as my saviour, I shall see the downfall of my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put any confidence in flesh. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put any confidence in princes. All the nations covered me, but by the name of the Lord I drove them back. They hemmed me in, they hemmed me in on every side. But by the name of the Lord I drove them back. They swarmed about me like bees. They blazed like fire among the thorns. But by the name of the Lord I drove them back. Surely I was thrust to the brink. But the Lord came to my help. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. Joyful shouts of salvation sound from the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. The right hand of the Lord raises up. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come, O Lord, and save us, we pray. Come. Lord, send us now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. He has given us light. Link the pilgrims with cords right to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will thank you. You are my God and I will exalt you. I will give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. I will give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Saving God, open the gates of righteousness, that your pil pilgrim people may enter and be built into a living temple on the cornerstone of our salvation, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our New Testament reading, uh, as we continue reading 2 Corinthians, chapter 5. 
For instance, we know that when these bodies of ours are taken down like tents and folded away, they will be replaced by resurrection bodies in heaven. God made, not handmade. And we'll never have to relocate our tents again. Sometimes we can hardly wait we can hardly wait to move. And so we cry out in frustration. Compared to what's coming, living conditions around here seem like a stopover in an unfurnished shack. And we're tired of it. We've been given a glimpse of the real thing. Our true home. Our resurrection bodies. The Spirit of God whets our appetite by giving us a taste of what's ahead. He puts a little of heaven in our hearts so that we'll never settle for less. That's why we live with such good cheer. You won't see us drooping our heads or dragging our feet. Cramped conditions here don't get us down. They only remind us of the spacious living conditions ahead. It's what we trust in, but don't yet see that keeps us going. Do you suppose a few ruts in the road or rocks in the path are going to stop us? When the time comes, we'll be plenty ready to exchange exile for homecoming. But neither exile nor homecoming is the main thing. Cheerfully pleasing God is the main thing. And that's what we aim to do, regardless of our condition. Sooner or later, we'll all have to face God, regardless of our conditions. We will appear before Christ and take what's coming to us as a result of our actions, either good or bad. That's keeping us vigilant. You can't be sure. It's no light thing to know that we'll all one day stand in that place of judgment. That's why we work urgently with everyone we meet to get them ready to face God. God alone knows how well we do this. But I hope you realise how much and deeply we care. We're not saying this to make ourselves look good to you. We just thought it would make you feel good, proud even, that we're on your side and not just nice to your faces as so many people are. If I acted crazy, I did it for God. If I acted over serious, I did it for you. Christ's love has moved me to such extremes. His love has the first and last word in everything we do. Our firm decision is to work from this focus centre. One man died for everyone. That puts everyone in the same boat. He included everyone in his death so that everyone could also be included in his life. A resurrection life. A far better life than people ever lived on their own. Because of this decision, we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. We looked at the Messiah that way once and got it all wrong, as you know. We certainly don't look at him that way anymore. Now, we look inside and what we see is that everyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start. It's created new. The old life is gone, a new life burgundy. Look at it. All this comes from the God who settled the relationship between us and him. And then called us to settle our relationships with each other. God put the world square with himself through the Messiah. Giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. God has given us the task of telling everyone what he is doing. We're Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and to enter into God's work of making things right between them. We're speaking for Christ himself now. Become friends with God. He's already a friend with you. How, you ask? In Christ. God put the wrong on him who never did anything wrong so we could be put right with God. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, 
that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. That glory may dwell in our land. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Your salvation is near to those who fear you. That glory may dwell in our land. You have looked with favour on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call her blessed. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have looked with favour on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call her blessed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that Alan is doing at this church. All that he is doing in your name spread your word and your good news to all people to care for all the people of this church Lord it's a tiring task to give so much of yourself for others Lord we thank you for him and we ask that you strengthen him that you renew his passion renew his energy that he can continue to serve you, Lord, for your glory and not his own. Thank you for Emma and the children, Lord. We ask you to bless them now, to lift them and heal them, that they can be a support to Alan in his role here. That your love flows through that family, Lord. And your strength Flows through, flows through that family. Lord, bless them all this day, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We take a moment now to lift our own individual prayers to you in this moment of quiet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for all the nursing homes and hospices, all those who are there or ill, who may be suffering, Lord. We lift them to you and pray for your healing hands to be upon them. And their families don't worry. And your peace can descend on these places, Lord. And we thank you for all the staff who work there, who care for these people, who look after them day in, day out, or renew them, refresh them. Thank you for their energy that they give, for their love and care that they, they freely give. Bless them this day, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your spirit and kindle in all who minister the gospel your countless gifts of grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so with longing we pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me this evening. I pray you have a peaceful and restful night. And join us tomorrow for our Sunday services at 9.30 and 11 o'clock. God bless. See you later.